Welcome back. This time we have a landscape image and in this video and the next video, we will be seeing the power of artificial intelligence tools in Photoshop. Some of them which have very, very recently arrived and are literally creating so much commotion that it feels like editing is going to change forever. You will be simply amazed by what you will be learning in this particular video. So first of all, I quickly want to show you one of the things that we often do in landscape photography is that we want to replace the sky. Now, first of all, let's not talk about AI or artificial intelligence. Let's see how we can select the sky manually, which is very, very easy because you simply have to go to select you have to go to sub, uh, not subject this time, you have an option that says sky. So it'll actually automatically be able to detect the sky inside your shot. Like this. And then what you can do is, if I just unlock this layer, it's pretty easy to understand. You simply delete this and get rid of the marching ants. And then if you had an, another image of a sky, you basically take that and then you put it under this one and that sky will come here. So that's pretty easy to understand. I'm not going to show you because we have done things which are similar to that in the prior videos. But I actually want to show you how this can actually be done with simply a single click thanks to AI. So let me show you an AI based tool to do this, which is the sky replacement tool. So just see the magic of this. If I go to edit and if I go to this option, which says, uh, sky replacement here it's literally a one-click job just see i'm going to hit this it'll not only detect the sky it'll actually change it to the different skies that we have available here okay see so we don't even need another image of a sky it deletes that thing puts another sky all with one click and the best part is you get to play with many different types of skies here and literally select anything that you want here Another best part about doing this, if you're noticing the foreground is that it also automatically applies the lighting of the corresponding sky. So if you choose a pink sky, it kind of fills the foreground with a pink like hue. So it kind of makes it very realistic also. So this time you get so many different skies here. Let's go for a really spectacular one. Okay. So maybe let's go for something like this. You can able to see the difference here also. And in case you want the difference to be more, a couple of things that you can do. So if I just click anywhere on this window, first of all, you can do a lot of things to the sky itself. That means you can make this warmer. And I'm not going to go through all the sliders because, you know, these are pretty easy to understand. You can change the brightness of the sky and all these things. Uh, you can even, sh if you're noticing any problem on the edges, you can play around with these two sliders. You can even scale the clouds, okay? So you can make it bigger or smaller. And then you can also, if you're not happy with the color here, you want more of that color being reflected on the foreground, you can even move this color adjustment function. And that is going to harmonize things a bit more. So this is one of the AI based tools, which is really, really good, but we are not going to stop here. So what I'm going to do is, and by the way, can you see how much of the job it does with a single click with all these layer masks and everything this has Photoshop has done this for you. So it's still a very non-destructive edit here, but this can be tough to understand. Okay. So it's perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do just to make things easy right now is that let's say we just want to get rid of this. So I can, one of the things that you can do in Photoshop is just click, right click, on any of these okay any of the layers and either click on merge visible or flatten image so if I do this it basically gets rid of everything and turns it into one image now that this is non-destructive uh, sorry this is destructive okay but sometimes it's okay to do this and especially if you have a longer edit and the reason for that is if you keep piling up layers one after the other it also puts a lot of pressure on your system on your computer and sometimes then things can start lagging a bit so if you're noticing layers are getting too much it's okay to be a bit destructive but one thing that you can do is that before you do this before you flatten the image just save it as a photoshop document so sometimes i call this like a milestone based editing that means if you complete a good milestone save it as a document and then flatten it so that you don't put too much process uh, too much work on your computer okay it's a common strategy used by a lot of good editors but definitely yes it makes your editing a bit destructive 
But anyway, let's continue with this because I really want to show you one very cool tool. And this is an AI based tool called as a neural filter. Okay, so till now we have seen some of the things here, we have seen some of the things here, but we haven't really seen too many things which actually change the photograph from here. So one of the important menus is the filter menu where you find, remember the camera or filter also, which was really nice. But another thing is neural filters and these are artificial intelligence based. So just see what these are gonna do. So I'm just gonna click on them. All right, so the neural filters are just opening up and what you're gonna see, there are a lot of different types of neural filters. Of course, in this crash course, I can't cover all of them. Recently, I released a Photoshop AI course which covers everything artificial intelligence based in Photoshop there. I actually show you all the filters one by one and so much more. But here, at least let me show you because this is a landscape shot. Let me show you one of the filters which is landscape based called the landscape mixer. So here, if I just open these up, it's still in the beta stage. Anytime you see something in Photoshop where it says beta, that means it's still developing. It's a new thing that has just come inside Photoshop. So if I enable this, just want to show you quickly one thing, even though in my proper course, I cover this in a lot of detail. Let me, let me show you, get some sliders here. And this is actually going to blow your mind away. Just see, you see this winter slider here? Just see what happens if I just move this forward. Now this is going to process a bit, but let's wait for the result. All right, here is the result. Isn't that absolutely mind blowing? Just by moving a slider, you absolutely change the look of the landscape image and give it, given it a winter like look. Okay, let's this time push this back and give it an autumn like look. All right, this is the result. So you can see just by moving things around, we can do a lot. And just imagine this is still in beta stage, it's only gonna improve. Now, one more tool that I'm really excited about is actually under the wait list here. So if I go here, this has not yet been released, but this is the water long exposure. That means, well, this didn't have that silky look, okay, which you get when you use a slower shutter speed. But now, what Photoshop is coming up with, you can actually use an AI-based filter to turn your normal waterfalls into that silky looking thing just by a single click. So of course, once this comes up, I will definitely be releasing a video for that. So right now, I'm gonna click on, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go back to old filters. I quite like the winter look. So first of all, I'm gonna go back to the winter look and we're gonna actually be using one more AI tool to finish the job for this landscape shot. Once this is applied, what I can do now is, Either you can output this to a current layer, that means it'll just merge with the existing image that we had in Photoshop, or what I like to do is always just output this to a new layer so we maintain our original layer also. So we can do that, hit OK, and it's gonna come here. So this is on top, this is the neural filter thing that we did, and this is the original. You see, right? That was pretty nice. Now let's say I also want to add a person here who's looking at this waterfall. Can that be done using AI? You bet it can. So for that, however, we'll have to go to the star of all the AI tools in Photoshop, which is called as generative fill. That is not even available inside Photoshop. It's so new that right now it's available inside only a software called Photoshop Beta. So Adobe has a separate software called Photoshop Beta, which as you're gonna find out is exactly the same as Photoshop. It's just that all the new tools that Adobe experiments with, they usually come to Photoshop Beta first. So let me show you, first of all, where to access Photoshop Beta from. All right, so once you open up the Creative Cloud app from where you install Photoshop, what you have to do is just go on apps here, okay, and on the left side, you're gonna find this option which says beta apps. And here you'll find Photoshop beta. Simply install this, download this, and then open it. So let me open it and let me show you how this looks. All right, so this is how Photoshop beta looks. You can see it exactly looks like Photoshop. And also the best part is you get access to Photoshop beta as a subscriber of the photography plan that you have already subscribed for, the Photoshop and the Lightroom pack that you subscribe for, which I showed in, in the early moments in this course. 
So you get access to this. Now everything looks the same, but what is the difference? Like I said, there are some additional tools available. So remember, what was our objective? I wanted to add a person here who's looking at the waterfall. So there's a tool called Generative Fill by which you can actually tell Photoshop that, listen, this is something I want. You can type it out and it'll actually produce that for you. This is only available in the beta apps because it's still not being transferred to the real Photoshop. It'll happen in some months from now. And how this works is, first of all, you need to select the area. So I'll just take my lasso tool. And for example, I want that person to be here, okay? So let's say I just make a rough selection like this. By the way, you don't really have to understand all the things, okay? Like I said, I have a separate AI course to check that out also. But the moment you do that, you get this little bar here, okay? And can you see, you get this option which says generative fill. If you're not seeing this bar, you can go to window and just make sure you select this contextual text taskbar option, okay? So if you check this, it'll come. And inside this, you can use this tool called generative fill where you can simply type whatever you want. So I want to say here, a man looking at the waterfall. And let's see what Photoshop does with this when I hit generate. Right, so let's wait for this. Sometimes it can take a bit of time. And here we go, and you can see it's actually produced that person out of nowhere. Now, you may not be directly happy with the first result you get, so you can check out the different variations here. And in this case, to be frank, it's not done such a good job. So you can always hit generate once more, or you can even change the prompt, okay? So let's say man wearing winter clothes, looking at the waterfall. All right, let's wait for this. And yeah, this time I feel it slightly looks better. Okay, something like this. Now, in my defense, I actually hadn't tried this with this winter look, so probably it's not working well. I did, however, try it with the earlier image when we hadn't made the filter-based changes. Let's also see the results with that. Right, so I've used the same prompt again, a man looking at the waterfall, but this time we don't have that winter look because I think that's a bit tough. Uh, you know, this is still in the beta stages for it to harmonize it well. Okay, the harmonization means is the color cast equal to that winter look and all. It can be a bit challenging, but when I used it on this image, it did a pretty good job. So let's look at this. All right, let's wait for this and you can see, right, this time this looks way more realistic. Right, so see the difference, we get four variations, you can select any one of them. And the better you become at prompt, you know, and also it's a game of selections. Like I said, right now you don't have to understand how this works, I'm just introducing you to whatever is new inside Photoshop, okay? But yes, you have to get better at prompts and also making selections in order for generative fill to work uh, well. But you can see this is not bad. Also, let's have another look at a better usage of the generative fill, right? So I'm still inside Photoshop beta. This time we've got this image. And what I wanna do with the help of generative fill here is that I wanna make some graffiti on the wall. And how that is gonna work is, first of all, we'll have to make an accurate selection of the wall, and then we'll put the graffiti there, okay? So let's say, so how do you do that? Now you should be knowing this. We are simply gonna select our subject, once you've done that, we are simply going to inverse this selection like we've been doing before. Now we know that we have the wall and the floor, but we don't want the graffiti on the floor. That means we still want to remove this part from the selection, right? So we can, now you know how to do this. We can just simply take the lasso tool here, hit Alt Option, that is going to help us remove from this. I can just rough, in a rough way, I can just do this. Okay, but if I wanted to be more precise, here's one, area where I could have used the rectangular marquee tool also, but that's fine, okay? I'm just showing you an example. Now, if I take generative fill here and type in something like, now I already typed in graffiti, it was not giving good results. So I just used this prompt which worked better, which was drawing on the wall, on wall, okay? Sometimes you'll have to just try out different prompts. So let's see the results that this gives us. All right, let's wait for this. 
And boom, isn't that absolutely fantastic and more importantly, realistic, right? So let's look at the different variations here of the graffiti that we get. This is also good. You can choose any one of them. And just imagine this is also non-destructive, by the way, it comes with its layer mask. So whatever you are seeing here, you can change, remove, work on it any way that you want. Once you're done with it, you can simply export it just like we've seen it before. So these are the amazing AI-based tools that are coming up inside Photoshop. We will be back to the normal Photoshop in the next video because we have a lot of learning left. See you there. Bye for now.